Five new hairs on my left sideburn. Two on the right. Hot swollen clit. All busy feeling, if you know what I mean. I resent the symptoms and skeptical yet demanding of them. Without them, I don't know that I'm changing. But with them, I'm another subject. An affliction. But as much as I interrogate or ignore them, the symptoms just shrug back at me with the bashfulness of water that will not boil for being watched. Lately, I've been struck by how quick queers are to hurt each other, quick to let each other down in a moment of insecurity, ignorance, or just plain cowardice. I feel like we all should know better, especially the haters that have had the privilege to go to school, have had the opportunity to get smart enough to see through the mechanisms complicit in sneaking us into our own biggest obstacles. I cringe at these highly visible, unhinged douchebag trans guys giving us all a bad name. It wouldn't be so bad if so many of them didn't blame it on the hormones or made it easier for other people to blame it on the hormones. I mean, if some fool is stupid, it's because they've always been stupid. And if some fool is a jackass, it's because they've always been a jackass. And if some fool lacks the bodily eloquence, it's because they never had it in the first place. I did my first guest faculty lecture the other day. It was fun, intense, inspiring. It reminded me that I really can do this. It got me excited about working with other gender and sexuality professionals. It was pretty awe-striking to get a room full of people with mixed levels of gender education excited and engaged over the complex intersections of gender, sexuality, queerness, masculinity, mestizaje, colonization, installation art, all that good shit. I was also reminded how important this shit is, how everybody needs it, even if it means taking risks, going to the scary places, the messy places. We did this exercise loosely based on Linda Berry's activity from her book, What It Is. In front of us was how we perceived ourselves. Behind us was how others perceived us. To the right was the past, and to the left, the future. I wrote, ahead, just the hills loving me and me loving them back endlessly. My voice must be thicker now. I want it to be thicker so bad. I want to be able to feel it in a glass when I speak. In the past was just the silence and the rage and the bitterness, just all that and the fear of self-treachery, the punishment for which was death. In the future, will I get stupid or sloppy? Or will the exhausted angels bless the th this earthly body with celestial grace? I don't know. In the future, the sun is blinding. And behind me, the crowd breathing and winded, the leviathan that doesn't matter if they are horrified and expectant and hungry and cheering me on. Doesn't matter, I feel them breathing and winded.